In this video, I'll demonstrate how we do some TM alignments on a Joel 2100 TM that has a lanthanum hexaboride crystal as its source. So with the lanthanum hexaboride crystal, some of these alignments would be different than, say, um, a field emission gun source. So first off, I'm going to go into some required alignments that we should do pretty much every time we're on the TM. Our sample's in here, so I'm going to go to low mag mode because I wasn't able to see anything because, as you can see, I was actually sitting on the grid for a TM mesh grid, grid bar. So now I'm switching to mag 1, and I'm going to adjust the Z height of our sample. So I'm going to do that using the image wob X button and then adjust the Z with the plus and minus arrows. So what I want to do is minimize the wobbling that you see here. So try going one way. If it gets worse, try and going the other. And then you can see I overcorrected, and so now we're minimized with wobbling. So I'm going to deselect the image wob X button. Now there is another way to correct the Z height, and this is really good, especially for materials that have low contrast. So in this case, we converge our beam with the brightness knob to a point, and then we adjust our Z just like before. This time you may have a diffraction pattern if you have crystalline material or an amorphous disk like what we're seeing here. And so in either case, you just want to change the Z so that we have any of that material coming to that central spot. Next is the condenser lens aperture centering. We're going to condense our beam to a spot. We're going to change to our condenser um, lens aperture 2. And I am expanding the beam so that it covers the phosphor screen or just gets to the edge of it. And then I adjust the centering of that using the knobs on our aperture assembly since we have a manual aperture. Now I condense the beam and then I'm going to make sure that it's centered using the bright tilt button and the shift X and Y knobs. And I just iterate this, expand the beam, center it with the knobs on the aperture assembly, condense it, make sure it's still centered. It's not bright tilt button, shift X, Y knobs. Next is the voltage access centering. So for this, we want some kind of circular material. So it could be a particle like what we have here, or it could be a hole. I'm going to increase the mag to 200,000 times, center the particle, and then select the HT wob button. Now we want this wobbling that you're seeing from the upper left to the lower right to change to more of breathing about the center. We do that selecting the bright tilt button and our deflector stigmator X and Y knobs change these one at a time otherwise you can get a little bit confused if you're con if you're actually minimizing the wobbling or not so it takes a little bit of time to get used to what breathing about the center looks like once you have this centered at 200,000 increase to 500,000 times center the particle and do just like before the HT wob button and correct any wobbling that's not breathing about the center by using the bright tilt button and the deflector stigmator X and Y knobs one at a time. So once it's centered fairly well, you can deselect the HD wob button and the bright tilt buttons. Now I'm just zooming out to about 100,000 times and I'm just checking that my condenser lens aperture centering is still good because sometimes this voltage access centering can throw our condenser lens aperture centering off. So in terms of required alignments, that's it. There are some option alignments you can do depending on what data you intend to collect in your session. So first, we're going to start with intermediate lens astigmatism, and this would be useful if you plan on doing selected area electron diffraction. So expand your beam so that it's quite faint, and then switch to diffraction mode by selecting the SA diff button. We want to start at 200 centimeter camera length, so if you're not already there, increase your camera length to 200 centimeters using the MagCam L button. 
Now we want to center our patterns, so select the PLA button and the Flector Stigmator X and Y knobs. We want to sharpen the pattern, do that using diff focus knob, and then select the IL Stig, which we have mapped to our F5 function, and get this caustic spot to look right using the Flector Stigmator X and Y knobs. Unfortunately, you can't really see that with the way that the camera captured this. Next is the condenser lens astigmatism. So this is useful if you plan on doing high resolution imaging. So condense your beam, and then we won't need to drop our current so that we actually see the tip of our crystal, our lanthanum hexaboride crystals. So select the filament image button, or in some cases you may have to manually decrease the filament so that we start to see the tip. We want to fine tune the focus of our filament image using the brightness knob, you may need to deselect the course button for that. Then select the condenser stig button and use the deflector stigmator X and Y knobs one at a time to sharpen up this image as much as possible. So once you have a nice sharp filament image, you want to go back up to our normal filament conditions. So select the normal button for that. And then you're good to go. Lastly, you may want to do the objective lens astigmatism correction if you plan on doing high resolution imaging. For this, I'm going to remove our two panels because they'll be in the way and you'll be able to show you the whole screen. So just keep in mind, we'll be using the objective stick button and the deflector stigmator knobs. And then also I'll talk about using the objective focus fine knob. So first off, let's start in digital micrograph. We're going to insert our camera. The way our system is set up, we actually have that present below the phosphor screen. So we're gonna wait for the image to be active and then we're gonna remove the screen and keep an eye on the saturation value, uh, making sure the value of any given pixel is, is much below the, over the saturation limit of our camera. So that's highlighted here. Now I'm gonna zoom out a bit so that I can actually see some particles now we're not interested in particles for this actual alignment, we want to focus on amorphous material. So I'm zooming in to the carbon film that's the support for this sample. And then I'm condensing the beam so that I start to see those little blobs coming out. That's our amorphous material. Now we'll do process, live, FFT, or control shift F if you like hotkeys. And that gives us an FFT of our field of view. And we wanna put down a circle annotation so to make sure it's a perfect circle, hold Control and Shift as you left click on your mouse to make the circle. And now we have a guide. We want this pattern to be a nice circle. So we're going to do the objective stig button, like I mentioned, and our deflector stigmator knobs one at a time to get this, what looks like an oval, to be more circular. Now, sometimes it's a little difficult to see this. Um, the, this circular shape doesn't come out. And so if that's the case, adjust your objective focus fine knob, which is what I'm showing here. And then you're actually able to see um, that ring pattern a little bit better. So once this looks good, you can deselect the objective stig button. We can close our FFT. We don't need to save it. We should put our screen back down and then stop our camera from viewing and then retract it as well. So that's it in terms of optional alignments. These advanced alignments are things that I typically do once a month for users. But if you're collecting really high quality data, it, it's a good idea maybe to run through these or if it hasn't been done on your system in a long time. So I will say, if you're going to do these advanced alignments, I would do them first and then follow up with the required and optional alignments that I just went through. First, let's do the gun shift. So at 100,000 times, we're going to condense our beam with the brightness knob. We want to make sure we're using spot size 1 for this. So if you're not already in spot size 1, adjust that. And then we're going to select the gun align button, which we have mapped to our F4 button. And you're going to use the shift X and Y knobs to center the condensed beam on your phosphor screen. Then we'll go up to spot size 5. You'll need to condense the beam with the brightness knob. It's a bit difficult to see where the center of the screen is, so I put down our mini phosphor screen to help guide me. 
And now you can see it's off centered quite a fair amount. So we're gonna select our bright tilt button and use our shift X and Y knobs to center it. Now we go back up to spot size one, we condense our beam, we select our align, gun align button and use our shift X and Y knobs to center the pattern. We go back to spot size five, condense our beam, select our bright tilt button and use the shift X and Y knobs to center. So you can see we are iterating. We are going from spot size one to spot size five. At spot size one, we're using the gun align button and the shift X, Y knobs. At spot size five, we're using the bright tilt button and our shift X and Y knobs. So you're going to do this as many times as it takes to get it so that as you go between spot size one and five, the pattern doesn't shift. It will shift a small amount, but you just wanna minimize the fact that it's off-centered. Next up is the gun tilt alignment. So use the brightness knob to condense your beam. And now we will want to select our filament image like we did previously for the condensers lens astigmatism. Now in this case, we're going to select our gun align button and then use our deflector stigmator X and Y knobs one at a time to get the intensity in the four different quadrants of our filament image to be approximately equal. Once we're finished with that, you can deselect the gun align button, and then bring your filament back up to its normal condition using the normal button. Moving on to tilt purity. So for this, you're gonna use the compensator tilt button in the alignment panel, and then select the tilt X under wobbler. We wanna use the deflector stigmator, just the X knob, to minimize that wobbling that you're seeing. Once that's done, you can deselect the tilt X button under wobbler and select tilt Y. This time use the deflector stigmator Y knob to minimize any of the wobbling. Once you're done, deselect tilt Y and deselect the tilt button under compensator. Now we'll do shift purity. For this, we wanna go into diffraction mode. So expand your beam so it's quite faint. Select the SA diff button. Make sure you're at camera length 200 if you're not there already. Sharpen up your pattern using the diff focus knob. And center it using the PLA button and the deflector stigmator X and Y knobs. Now we need to go back to this alignment panel. We're now gonna select the shift button under the compensator field, and then the shift X button under wobbler. We'll use our deflector stigmator X knob to minimize the wobbling. Once that's good, we can deselect the shift X and select shift Y and now use the deflector stigmator Y knob to minimize the wobbling. Once that's good, deselect the shift Y button and deselect the shift button under compensator. We can go back to mag one at this point and make our beam visible by adjusting the brightness. So that's it in terms of alignments. 
like I said, if you're going to do these advanced alignments, you do want to start with those first and then move back to the required and the optional. And this applies to a Joule 2100 lanthanum hexaboride source microscope, but some of these alignments are very similar with other TNs.